So at this point, I want to make sure that I saved um, and I want to make some really quick decisions about what the overall scale of my uh, individual assets are going to be and how big my overall level is going to be. Um, at this point, I've experimented with a couple of different options. Um, I started with a cube that gave me a sense of scale. This cube is uh, one unit or one meter, uh, according to Unity, um, which is the same size as my player character. Now, I've experimented with a couple of different things in the previous presentation. I have this rotating cube. It's set to three. Um, I had this temporary ramp just to get up on the cube. Um, its width was set to four, and I've decided that based on uh, these shapes, I kind of like the, the, the overall uh, unit of these tiles. I'm going to go with a size of four. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't make, you know, kind of smaller assets at some point. And, uh, you know, if I want something really tricky to navigate through, uh, maybe I'll have their width uh, set to one meter or two meter. But the, the basic idea is that we have a common denominator and, and a basic unit that we start building our level based on. And I'm going to choose four or four meters for the basic size of uh, my assets. Now, um, again, I will make those smaller and I'll make them larger in some cases. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I use this temporary cube uh, as a ramp and I'm gonna delete that. Um, I have two different rotating cubes. I, I'm, I'm just gonna do a real quick cleanup here. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of one of my rotating platforms. I'm gonna keep the platform uh, that was rotating but I'm gonna bump its X and its Z value up to four. I'm gonna set its height value for now, I'm gonna leave it at one, okay? I'm gonna make some quick changes. I'm gonna zero out everything uh, in the environment and, and I'll just move this over. Now, uh, I'm gonna move this over. I've zeroed out its position at zero, 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 and I don't want this platform to sit here. Remember, this is the one that rotates. Uh, but I wanna move it over and I wanna be pretty precise. If I hold down the Command key on a Mac, uh, and I click and drag by one of the axes, you can see that it starts to snap. And it starts to snap based on an increment of one. I can see this in the transform uh, value in the inspector component for X. So I'm just gonna move that over and snap. Um, that way when I, when I move objects around, I can quickly snap them together to create a more complex level. Now, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I'll snap this up to a height of one. Um, its width is, is 4 and its depth is 4 as well. Uh, I'm not so concerned about its Y value, but there are a couple of things with this rotate mechanic that I want to fix. I'll hit the play button and it rotates. And based on the previous rotation that I created, it rotates 90 degrees and then pauses. Uh, and based on the way that I, I've now changed the model, um, that may be kind of interesting in terms of I have a broad side that I can navigate and then when it rotates, if I want to challenge myself, I could I could navigate along the uh, the narrow side. Um, alternatively, what I could do is I could change the rotation value in this action uh, from from 30. I could change this so that it rotates 180 degrees based on our weight value. And so if I just double that value, whatever it is, or I could change the the time that it waits. But if I double the value, it's going to rotate twice as fast, and it's going to stop on the flip side. So it'll, it'll do a full rotation, a full 180 degrees before it stops. Now, um, that seems a little bit more challenging in terms of, of how fast it rotates, and I, and I might not want that for the testing period. But again, right now is really just about kind of ironing out the basic mechanics for uh, our level. We can, we can continue to tweak these as we want. Now, I do want to make one change. This rotate platform, I want it to be able to rotate, but if I duplicate it, and I'll just Command D to duplicate, I'm gonna hold down the Command key and move this forward to snap, and I'll just snap that so that they're lined up exactly together. Now if I hit the play button, they're gonna rotate at the exact same rate, not, exa not what I want. I want them to offset, I wanna interleave these. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little functionality into this rotate command uh, and I'll ultimately reuse this. So it doesn't matter which cube I have selected because they're exactly the same right now. But I'm gonna add a state. And I'm just gonna click, right click over here in the uh, Playmaker Editor and add state. And I'm gonna call this the init state or initialize state. Okay, I'm gonna use init for short and that, this will initialize our machine. Now, all I want to happen on the init state is I want it to wait. So I'm gonna go find a wait 
I'm going to look for time, I'm going to find weight, and uh, at this point, if I start to remember what the functions or the actions are called, rather than digging through these menus, I can just go up here to the search field and type in weight, and you'll see that that action comes up. I'll double click, and we'll do a wait time, for now, we'll do a wait time of zero. And for our finished event, I'm going to create an event, and I'll simply call it, call this done. Okay, and I'll come up with a better name for it later, but for now, I'm gonna wait, and when it's done waiting, I wanna pass that off. Now what I'll do is I want this init state to be our start state, okay? So I'll just right click on init, and I'll choose to set as the start state. And now what we have is some, we've now just set that action, or that, that uh, uh, state as our starting state, so now it's starting in the init state. And, and the effect that I want is I want it to start, I want it to wait a given amount of time, and then start its loop. So I want to pass this. So I'll add my done transition, and I'll pass that to rotating. Okay, now currently, in this first instance, we don't wait at all. We wait for zero seconds, we pass that off to done, and so the effect is going to be we start, we pass through the init, and then now we start our loop. But now that we have this init state, what we can do is we can say, well, wait a second, let's wait 0.2 seconds. And I'll hit the play button. And now, the first one starts to rotate, and the second one starts to rotate a little bit later. Now, I'll, I'll wanna bump that value up, so I'll say 0.5, so half of a second, and I'll hit play. Now the first one plays, the second one starts a half second later. It's still a little bit um, too fast. I want a little bit more differentiation between the two. So I'll have it wait a full second, and I'll hit the play button. That's more what I'm looking for. So now I have this simple effect of, I have it rotate, they're interleaved, and now I have a value that I can play with um, to start to create uh, differentiation in the rotation, and it's built into this machine. So I'll toggle that play button off. This first cube does not have that initialization, so I can always rebuild it, or I can just delete that object and reuse the, the, the good one here. So I'm gonna duplicate the object, I'll hold down the command key and move this over so it snaps. This will be my first cube in the series that rotates, my first rotating platform. I'm gonna set the wait time to zero. I have my second cube in the rotating platform. Its wait time is set to one. I'm gonna duplicate this object. I'll duplicate command D or copy and paste, I'll, I'll snap and move this forward. Duplicate's nice because it inherits the, the current position and all the coordinates of the object. I'm gonna change the init time, or the initialization, or the wait time from one, I'll set this one to two. I'll duplicate again, so I'll just go back, make sure I'm focused on my scene view, and I, I do that quickly by just selecting the rotate platform object in the hierarchy. Command D to duplicate and I'll just hold down the command key while I move, and that snaps. I'll take this weight, and I'll bump that up one second each time. So now when I hit the play button, now we have more of a platformer style rotation where we, if we wanna navigate our player across this, uh, now we need to be a little bit more precise, okay? Now, so that's just a, a basic strategy for creating this offset. Uh, I'm seeing these, these label, these state labels popping up during my gameplay. And for the most part, that there can be some value in having these. I mean, it, all, all it's doing is telling us what state the current object is. And that's pretty good for, you know, troubleshooting and, and bug squashing. But we can also pay attention to what's going on down here to test individual objects. And so what I'm gonna do is I wanna turn off my state labels so that I don't see them when I publish my game. And the way that I'll do that is if I go down into the Playmaker Editor window, find the Preferences tab. I'll click on Preferences, and what I'm looking for is the second or third option down, it says Show State Labels in Game View, and I'll make sure that that is unchecked. Now, when I play my game, I'm no longer looking at my State Labels in the Game View. I can still, still troubleshoot down here, and I can pay attention to what's going on as long as I'm tracking. Right now, I have the fourth rotation cube selected, and I'm watching this machine kind of ping pong back and forth between rotate and wait. And I'm pretty happy with that in terms of a basic puzzle. 
Uh, I'm going to build another mechanic and I'll do that in the next presentation.